How have you been keeping busy and staying active during this period, sir? As a matter of fact, um, the COVID lockdown has been a blessing for me mm -hmm. in that um, I cannot leave the house and therefore I must find time to do other things like educating myself, like reading things I've never read before, mm -hmm. by learning to play a musical instrument, or all sorts of things that I couldn't do in my 30, 40 years of politics I am able to do now. Okay. Because, because I'm locked down. I can't go more. Right. Have Have you written any memoirs? Are you Are, are there any uh, works, uh, books in the works? Uh, yes, I'm in the process of doing an autobio. Okay. All right. And uh, well, whenever that book is released, uh, you're certainly welcome to return to the Bub Report. As a matter of fact, I'm hoping to that it be published after my death having regard to some of the things I intend to say in it. <laughs> well, you certainly don't want to ruffle any feathers, right? <laughs> okay. You, you and I share the distinction of being uh, ex-presentation college students. That's you... why we are so bright, yeah. <laughs> no, no, uh, what, what happened is that when I came into office, I realized that there were several important problems. And since oil was floating between uh, 10 and $15 a barrel, there was very little money. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we set up an order of priority. No country has all the money to, suffice, to, to, to satisfy all the desires. So you have to have priority. And the priority we set up was crime, and to deal with crime, you had to deal with unemployment. Mm -hmm. But to deal with unemployment, you had not only to attract investments, but you had to have people, citizens who were trained to fill the jobs created. So that what was required was an, educa an education system, you see. So crime was actually connected with education. Mm -hmm. So what we did was we built, I think, some 29 schools. We, are born, we had something called the common entrance exam. And the common entrance exam denied uh, about 6,000 children every year uh, access to a secondary education. And when I became prime minister and I inquired, why are these children being denied uh, secondary education? I was told that, well, there are no school places. And I said, well, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to tell you how to solve that problem. All you do is you build more schools. And we abolished the common entrance exam, built 29 uh, secondary schools, and opened the door to every child who was leaving primary school to enter into a secondary institution. That, that That's how uh, we came about it. We knew, but But I think we need more than that. We need to revise the education system. We need to determine why we are educating people. We see in, in the university in Trinidad, I don't know if the other countries, we are not inventors and innovators. We are treating, oh, we are training our citizens to become functionaries of the conglomerates. Mm -hmm. That, that is very telling there. You said uh, we, we are training citizens to become functionaries of the conglomerates. Yeah. Could you expand on that notion? Well, you see, the conglomerates own the wealth mm -hmm. and they use our graduates to continue to earn more wealth, but not to own. Mm -hmm. That's, that, that, that is my point. We must be able to have a system of education that encourages our people to create and to innovate, as opposed to merely becoming clerks and servants of the conglomerates. Yes, okay. And Mr. Pandey, finally, any final words uh, before we wrap up? I would love to have you back after, but you said you're not going to release the memoir until you have transitioned, but... <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I'm sure you don't mean that, sir. <laughs> well, well, you, uh, I'm trying to finish it before um, I depart this world. Okay. All right, Mr. Pandey, any final thoughts from you? I wish you well. I wish the Caribbean well. I hope that we recover from this pandemic and that people who have lost their jobs and, and, and are now having a hard time, that there will be a restoration of employment and that people will continue to be happy. I believe the function of government is to so organize the society to conduce to the greatest happiness of the greatest number of people. That is its function. And to do that depends upon the objective situation which that particular country enjoys at any given moment. Mm -hmm. But that objective situation changes. That is why we need to change the constitution mm -hmm. to meet the new objective situation. Uh, Mr. Pandey, thank you so much. It has been uh, our greatest pleasure here to have you on the Bub Report and uh, all the very best to you uh, in your future endeavors. Thank you so much, my brother. Mr. to you. Yes. God, God bless you and your family. Okay. All right. Hi, everyone. Thanks for checking out the Bob Report's social media pages. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch our weekly live show, follow our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram pages, and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can catch repeat episodes on Wednesdays at 4 and 5 p.m. respectively on CRFM Radio and GBN TV in Grenada. We are also viewed on Sundays at 8 p.m. on WPG10 throughout the Caribbean. Thanks for watching.